Recently, I salvaged some of this oak veneered MDF with a solid oak trim on one side and on the front. These were bookshelves originally and they were stored in a cold, damp building which unfortunately means that some mould has formed in a few places, hence why they were being thrown away. I had hoped that this mould would clean off with some scrubbing or sanding, but that didn't really work out as the veneer on this is so thin and the mould is pretty deeply impregnated, it actually goes all the way through the veneer into the MDF. So what I'm going to do is just to use the bits that are least affected by the mould, such as down here. I've already built these shelves as a shoe rack in my porch. These were just cut to length and screwed onto these brackets which slot into this adjustable shelving system that I've fitted to the wall. I've also cut notches out in the shelves to fit around the uprights so that the shelves fit snugly against the wall. And now that that's done, I want to make a coat rack to sit above it on the wall. I'm going to start by cutting the top shelf to size and I want it to fit snugly in the alcove in between the two walls. Definitely gonna be wearing a dust mask for this one because cutting into MDF is not good for your lungs. I marked up the length that I wanted the shelf to be, so that it would fit nicely in the alcove. I made the cut on the mitre saw, but it didn't have quite enough cutting capacity to cut through the whole board, so I finished off the cut with a handsaw. Now I'm going to rip the top shelf to the right depth on the table saw. And with the off cut from that last cut, I'm going to make the back piece that will have the hooks on. And I'm going to rip this to the same width as the last piece. So now I have the back piece that will have the coat hooks on it and the top shelf. And now all I need is some corner supports to hold up and support that shelf. So looking at this coat rack side on, we have the top shelf with the trim attached and the back piece where the hooks will be. So to cut a corner support for this I need to know three dimensions. This one, this one and this one. I already know this one because that's the dimension that I just ripped the shelf to which is 15.5 centimetres. Next I need the distance between here and the piece of trim and that's 11.6 and finally I need the distance between the underside of the top shelf and the edge of the trim which is exactly 3 centimetres. The table saw is still set at 15.5 centimetres so I'll rip another strip. and now I can mark up the other dimensions onto this piece. So this is the 15.5, here's the 11.6, and here's the three centimeters. And I'll join this corner with this mark. Now I can cut out those shapes on the bandsaw. I've got this thing dry assembled now, um, but before I glue it up, I will need to scrape off the old finish. So I'm just going to mark up the inside of these brackets and I'll scrape off the finish with a chisel. If you've been watching my channel for a while you'll probably know that I've been using some salvaged oak hat and coat stands recently in a lot of my builds and that means that I've got a lot of these hooks left over. 
So these are the hooks that I'm going to use on this coat rack. I'm going to try and fit 10 of these hooks on this coat rack because we have a lot of coats. The distance between the two brackets is 89 centimeters. So if I divide 89 by 11, that gives me the distance that I need to put in between the hooks. I'm gonna start by marking up the center and I'm gonna work out from that central point and see if my measurements are correct. First time for everything. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. That looks right. I'm gonna use a metal ruler that's flush with the bottom and I'm gonna make a line along the width of the rack. And that's where I'm going to drill the first holes. I've rubbed out all of the pencil lines that I don't need and now I'll drill out these holes. The distance between the two holes on the coat hooks is just under 19 millimeters. I'll use the calipers just to make a mark where I need to drill. I'm going to use these slot head screws that came with the hooks originally as I think they'll look better than the Phillips head screws. So now I'm going to glue on these corner brackets. I'm just going to get a clamp on each end, make sure that the sides are flush, and then I can add some screws. I'm using drywall screws for this. I wipes off the excess glue with a damp cloth. And now I can add the top shelf. I don't want to add screws to secure the top shelf because that will ruin the look, but I am going to fire in some brad nails just for a bit of extra strength. And the final thing I'm going to do is just to add a piece of oak to here and here to hide the MDF edges. I don't need to worry about the side um, because that's going to be hidden. It's going to be sat in an alcove so nobody's going to see that. These are the offcuts of oak that I've got that I'm going to use to make the trim. One side is finished and the other side is not. And the finished side matches quite well, so I can literally just cut these to the right thickness, which is two centimeters, and then glue them on. I glued on the pieces of trim and used some masking tape to hold it in place while the glue dried. I used a chisel just to bevel the edge slightly so that it wouldn't be in the way of the bottom trim piece. Unfortunately I didn't have a piece long enough for the front so what I've done is cut two pieces at a 45 degree angle 
and the grain matches pretty well so I don't think it'll show up too much. I stamped on my Maker's Mark to the underside of the top shelf. After a few hours I could remove the masking tape. You can see quite clearly here where the join is on the trim at the bottom, but with a couple of strokes of the hand plane I'm hoping that should disappear. And to help that colour blend in with the finish, I'm going to apply some boiled linseed oil. By this point I'd already drilled holes into the wall and inserted some wall plugs, but I didn't film that part. And here I'm making sure that the screws are in line with the wall plugs before screwing them in, and this was a little bit awkward. I used some brass washers with the screws just to make them look nicer. <laughs> 